Oh, Crook, dear, I have been phoning and phoning everywhere. The last person to see Edmund Gray was that Judy person he went out there to interview. And no one has seen hide nor hair of him since. Of course, the Highway Patrol has promised to look out for his car, but... Sweetheart, what's the matter? You're white as a sheet. I went to Jim's dark room to see if I could find anything that would help us locate Edmund. I found these hidden behind a picture of me. Oh, sweetheart, I'm sorry I can't read. I haven't got my glasses. They're copies of two life insurance policies issued by Pine Valley Mutual. I left the originals where I found them. One policy is issued in my name and the other one in Edmund's. In the event of our death, Jim Thomason stands to collect $2 million each. And Jim is planning to kill both of you. I was hanging out at the Royal Plaza Hotel in New York where the elite meet and greet and pat each other on the back and pay 20 bucks for a room service hamburger. You don't remember me, do you? But then why would you? You and Brooke were too busy basking in the limelight and I was nothing more than something you just scrape off the bottom of your shoe. Anyway, Brooke looked like she had an abundance of whatever it takes to pique a man's whatever. <laughs> so I kept a special eye on her. Of all the people in New York, you just happened to latch on to Brooke, right? I forgot. I'm talking to the Pulitzer boy. Of course, there is more to the story than that. I happened to run into Laura, and I found out that she had landed in Pine Valley, butter side up. You know, i got to hand it to that kid. I really must give her credit. It is not easy breaking out of poverty. But she managed to do it. And she ended up... <laughs> if a kid like that, a dumb kid like Laura, can end up smelling like a rose, then I thought, well, a smart guy like me ought to own the whole damn greenhouse. Not making enough money off the skin game? Bottom fall out of the porn market? Just business stuff, Ned. I'm not going to bore you with all the details. You know that we're real close to the crash site? If you listen very carefully, you can hear the waves crashing on the shore. Hear them? Now, they tell me that when the tide is right, ah, this place fills completely water. Houdini. Ed, did you know that Houdini could hold his breath for five full minutes while underwater trying to extricate himself from a pair of handcuffs? What do you think, Ed? Do you think that you can compete with the world's greatest escape artist? <laughs> These policies mean that Jim has put a price on your head. Yours and Edmund's. It's not conclusive evidence. Oh, for pity's sake, wake up. These are signed death warrants. Hey, Phoebe, Jim Thomason could claim it's standard business practice to insure your business partners. Brooke, Edmund is missing. And probably... Don't. Don't. Don't go there, because I know somebody who can help us. I'm a patient man, Ed. And I promise you that when the time is right, I will free you of your shackles and watch your body float out into the ocean, a veritable, movable beast for all manner of sea life, large and small. And when your little mobile picnic has finally come to rest upon some distant shore, an autopsy will most certainly prove that it was not murder. I will be home. Home free. 